I asked them like, you know, like which things are hard, which things are easy, like what's that's that's a great way to party, what's not, and yeah, I was just curious. I wanted to know everything, and because mm -hmm. I really felt like like I could did have a lot of money I could throw at it. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I'm gonna do this, I got to figure out a way to do it. Like, yeah on the DIY cheap side and take advantage yeah. of what I've got and go talk to people who are, have been doing it for 20 years mm -hmm. who are really smart. Hello and welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm your host, Sarah Scully, and today I'm here with my friend Kristen Judkins of Gilead Fiber Farm. Hi, Kristen. Hi, hey, Sarah. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having well, me. Well, at your farm. Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Um, so it's a beautiful freezing cold day. We'll see how long this interview goes. Uh, <laughs> and you might be able to see that it's snowing in the background. Um, but I really wanted to have Kristen on the show because she has a unique um, fiber origin story, or at least the part of it that I know. Um, <laughs> did it start with the contest? Did or, well, or were you doing were you doing crafts before that? I was yeah I was into I've been knitting and spinning my well knitting my whole life spinning the last probably fifteen years. Okay, and and that's what brought me to the com the community where the contest happened, and I was then poised. Okay, poised in <laughs> with your needles, right, you know, looking around yeah. at all my pastures, going, "How will I ever get some animals?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So and we should mention that Kristen's wearing a sweater that her grandmother knit her years ago. So that's it's really almost cool. fifty years old. This sweater. That's amazing. I love how wool holds up. <laughs> so tell me, tell me. Uh, let's start at the beginning. Tell me about learning to knit. Who taught you? Um, my grandmother and my mother taught me. Mm -hmm. They're both from Sweden, and so oh, okay. I learned continental at an early age, and yep. always thought it was weird when I saw other people knitting doing this thing mm -hmm. with their hands. I had trouble because my mom tried to teach me English. And I was like, this is dumb. And then she goes, well, hang on. There's another way to hold your yarn. And as mm -hmm. soon as, then it just took off. Yeah. 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 So. so that's interesting. So you learned continental from the beginning. Yep. Yeah. And that's just how I've always done it. I've tried yeah. to learn the other way and it doesn't work for me. Yeah. I'm also not gifted at crochet. <laughs> <laughs> that's hard. You just got to move the hand. Yeah. 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 So, and what kinds of things did you start knitting? initially I initially started knitting hats scarves and mitten sets for mm -hmm. my siblings for their oh. for their birthdays oh, and Christmas nice. and things yeah and I learned about tension by trying to make two mittens that were the same size mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember one Christmas distinctly making my sister some pink mohair mm -hmm. this whole set thing mm -hmm. and I had to knit like seven mittens to get two that match yeah I think we've all <laughs> and that. that were in the right size right. and range were two left hands human. or something yeah funny. the yeah. first pair that matched were actually both the same hand yeah I remember but... oops <laughs> so yeah I started with that and my grandmother was knitting these beautiful things and my mm -hmm. mother has always been an incredible knitter mm -hmm. so I was always a knitter yeah okay and then I failed at spinning which was a challenge from the universe. <laughs> How did that come, come in your lap? Um, it, one of the, my mom and I went on a knitting cruise. Oh, with okay. With Dennis Stoller. Okay. From um, the Stitch and Bitch books. Yes, yes. And yep. Shannon Oakey of Knit Girl fame. Yep. And they had a drop spindle class as one of their classes. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, this will be super easy. And mm -hmm. I went and I took it. And boy, did I fail. And I fail. And I fail. And I fail. Yeah. And so I, learned, I tried to crochet on that trip, too. Mm. <laughs> the spinning Knit I finally mastered, the crochet still evades me. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So from there, so you were knitting, and when did you move to Bethel? When did you move to this farm? Uh, I moved to this farm in July of 2003, so okay. almost 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and yeah. I did not intend it to be a fire fiber farm at the time, but mm -hmm. as I was living here and in Vermont and mm -hmm. finding so much beautiful wool locally available and just getting into trying out all the different breeds and figuring oh, sure. out, like, dreaming of, like, which sheep would I have if I could have any one? Right. And yeah. just think, oh, but I love the way this one spins. And then reading about them, there, there are 700 pound giants and yeah, like, right. okay, the that's not going to work. Of, of a medium sized cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I got like just like the, the the rabbit hole for spinning just got really really deep right yeah it's so <laughs> dangerous because once you start spinning you really start to appreciate the raw material right and then you're like oh but w would it be hard to keep sheep i, I know so many well exactly i'm looking around my house going geez i have these two barns that are just like storing stuff and i've got all this pasture my mm -hmm. neighbors are using for their cows and their horses and 
Yeah. Gee. Gee well, how hard would it be? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I thought, oh, well, I've got this neighbor up the street who raises a bunch of meat sheep. I'm going to go start hanging out with him. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way. And then I called like Kim Gifford Goodling over yeah. in Vermont Grandview Farm and I went and yeah. hung out with her and I just started going around to visit people I knew who had some sheep or goats mm-hmm. or something is like see like well how do they have it set up in there and what kind of fencing do they have and yeah I asked them like you know like which things are hard and which things are easy like what's that's that's a great way to party it. what's not and yeah I was just curious I wanted to know everything and because mm-hmm. I really felt like like I could didn't have a lot of money I could throw at it mm-hmm. so I thought if I'm going to do this I got to figure out a way to do it like yeah on the DIY cheap side and take advantage yeah. of what I've got and go talk to people who are, have been doing it for 20 years mm-hmm. who are really smart. I went to see Linda Doan. That's the thing. And, yeah. you know, I just got a lot of information. Yep. And while I was in the process of doing that, Susan Gibbs from the Juniper Moon Farm mm-hmm. was having too many goats because she was a no-kill farm, which is okay. kind of an unusual take that yep. I think only rich people can do. But in any event, <laughs> she had too many goats, Angora goats, yeah. And so she decided to have the Great Goat Giveaway, which was this online essay contest uh-huh. that you had to basically like, you know, write it, this essay about why you wanted these goats and why you thought you deserved them and yeah. convince her and then convince everybody else. Because all there were like 60 or 70 people who entered this contest and all the essays right. were on her website. So it was her genius best. marketing plan to get like a million people on her website all the time. Right. Because right. everybody had to go and read all these essays yeah. and then vote on them. And the yeah. voting was up for like a month and it was crazy. And I was up there like in the top five, like going, wow, how's that working? Yeah. Because I had a pretty... Uh-huh. You know, I was active on Ravelry and Facebook right. and, you know, I just yeah. was like, everybody, everybody, go vote for me, go vote for me, go vote for me. Yeah. And then they announced the winner on my birthday <gasps> in 2009, wow. which I also happens to be birthday, the Vermont yeah. Sheep and Wool Festival. So yes. I was at the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival when I got the news that I won my goats. <laughs> I probably goats. saw you because I ran around like to see everybody. I was like walking on a cloud like this. Yeah. And yeah. then I went to pick up my goats at Rhinebeck that year. That's amazing. And that's how that that's whole thing started. Story. Yeah. <laughs> it is a genius marketing plan though, especially if you have too many animals or you have breeding stock and you want to get people interested in your breeding right. stock. So it's a great way to say, so, okay. Oh, and by the way, while you're on the webpage, here's all the animals I have for sale and blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, it yeah. was genius in a lot of different mm-hmm. respects. I mean, it just like yeah. got her tons of advertising people out mm-hmm. because she had so much traffic on her website. I mean, it was genius. Yeah. Um, And she's That's an cool. incredible person. And yeah. That's how I got my goats, and I will always be thankful. Thankful, Susan, wherever you are out there. <laughs> <laughs> and great. all those people, the 700 or more people that right. all went and voted. And voted I still today, yeah. when I go places, people will say, oh, I remember that. I voted for you. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, because your name kind of got out there right right off the bat then, too, for being the right. winner of this contest. Right, and so then I instantly had to like start a rivalry group and get a blog thing going because everybody wanted to know what I was doing with the goats once I got them. Right. Yeah. And then once I had the goats, then, you know, people were giving away sheep and I was like, Oh, I've been doing all this research. I was like, well, Hmm. I can't just say yes to everything that people want to give me now that I'm like right. taking in animals. But I was like, I knew I wanted fins and I knew I wanted Shetlands because mm-hmm. the fin Shetland cross fleeces that I had spun were my favorite ever. Yeah. So when somebody called up and said, Hey, I've got a couple of Shetland ewes that are retiring and removing uh-huh. and will you take them? I said, well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so I got them, and yep. then the next year I went and I bought mm-hmm. my first pair of registered fins from, yep. um, I can't remember the name, is it Harlequin Farm? Yeah, I think that's right. Down yep. in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah. And I love I love our fin sheep. They're the friendliest. They are the sheep. friendliest. They yeah. love it. They scratch them under their nose uh-huh. and they wag their tails. They and, wag their tails. And they yeah. come running up to uh-huh. you in the barn and in the pasture. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah. So, and, so you, and you've had some success crossbreeding them then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, and just breeding them. In well, general. yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. In fact, um, my crossbreds actually tend to be the hardiest, mm-hmm. as usual. And they're beautiful because they get the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. The fleeces are incredible. Mm-hmm. And they have like the temperament and the hardiness. And they're just like. Yeah. They hit the ground like a tank and they just keep on going and yeah. they're awesome. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I have, have they're, the, they're the, the animals in my flock that I have the least trouble with. Uh huh. Yeah. Good to know. I mean, it's like hybrid vigor, I guess. Yeah, you know exactly. At least for the first generation. What? Um, so you also do kind of a fiber CSA on an on an infrequent basis, but you've done it a few times, I think. So yeah. Well, a little bit I plan to do it more frequently, but yeah. as you know, being in Vermont, and I was trying to keep my product in all Vermont product, using the Vermont Mills mm-hmm. was putting a very long time frame that I hadn't really planned on. Yeah. 
Um, so my and first cup, my first one was great and everybody loved it and mm -hmm. it was fantastic. And then the next one sat at the mill for mm -hmm. like literally two years without him doing Ouch. anything with it. Ouch. Um, yeah. And in the meantime, Susan started the Mad River mm -hmm. mill. Mm -hmm. So I was one of her first customers because I just wanted to see what she could do. I gave her fleeces that first time I met her. Yeah. So, um, after, so like I knew that that was going to be sort of like a thing and that was something new and I was like, cause you know, he's taking forever. Yeah. Product divine, wonderful person, but just the business yeah. model wasn't really working for me. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know? And yep. so, you know, as time went on and I left my day job and mm -hmm. started doing some self-employment stuff, I happened to be mentioning that to Susan when I was picking mm -hmm. up my will there, mm -hmm. which is how I ended up working with her at the mill over there in Waitsfield. Yeah. I started out just like helping her with her books and then uh -huh. her, the partnership was falling apart and she needed help. But she couldn't be the only one running it. I was like... I've always wanted to know how you work those big machines. Yeah. So tell us a little bit. So this is the Mad River Woolery, or it's, is it? It's the Mad River Fiber Mill? Arts and Mill. We had to change Fiber the name because the okay. woolery didn't like it. Right. Got it. Um, yeah. So yeah, we changed the name. It's the Mad River Fiber Arts and Mill, and mm -hmm. uh, we do custom processing for tons of local people. Mm -hmm. And so once I got that gig, mm -hmm. I went up to the other mill and took my raw fiber back. And mm -hmm. so I actually processed this share myself oh, at the mill. Excellent. So it's Great. mostly, that, that's what I'm packing up in the kitchen right now is the stuff to go out. That's There's awesome. one round of it that's still in process. It's not done, but uh -huh. I gave some away at spa last weekend and I didn't feel like I could hold out for the rest of the people that have been waiting for two years already. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and are you doing dyeing yourself as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I've been, I've been doing dyeing for the mill too. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's been really fun. Yeah. I like dyeing. It's, it's. I feel like it's a point at which you could really screw things up. So it's always a little bit trepidatious for me. I'm like, oh, this is going to come out of your color. But then when it does, you go, wow, look what I made. Well, I think the fact that I went to art school probably mm -hmm. helps me with the dye thing. Like, I don't really have a lot of fear about that mm -hmm. messing things up. Because I also feel like just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's not good. True. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. I learned that as a sculptor when it was, like, time to swap work for services. Uh -huh. People would always come to the studio and pick the thing that I hated the most and be like, that's the one I want. And I'd be like, wow, there really is something for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Especially with color, too. It's so subjective. It's, yeah. And it's like, yeah. I think you gravitate to the colors you wear, you think look, you look right. good in, and you think those are the best colors. And you have preconceived notions about how but you want not, it to look. But they're not, you know, yeah. they're not the best colors. It's just there is a color yeah. for everybody. I mean, people, so that's cool. people like what they like. And, mm -hmm. you know, unless it comes out completely like mud, I consider right. it. If not quite a success, mm -hmm. it's good enough. And if I really hate it, you can always over it. Right. Yeah. And then there's also the thing, there's that magical transformation that happens because the colors are so different from, if you dye in the fleece, the colors look like, huh, you know, like, oh, these are okay. Maybe I like them. And then yeah. you spin them and you're like, uh-oh, I don't know. But uh -huh. then you knit it and then, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. it all, like, it changes so it much does. over the process that I never really get too upset. Yeah. Until the very end. And at the very end, if the knitted thing is awful, mm -hmm. you can throw it in another pot of indigo or something mm -hmm. and call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get a really cool shade of forest green or something. Yeah. 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 I mean. Exactly. Yeah. That's really cool. So. And you've also taught, uh, speaking of dye, you've also taught dye classes and had yep. workshops here at the farm. So. I've done some here at the farm, but my mm -hmm. insurance company tells me that that was probably not the smartest thing for oh. me to do liability wise. So that's why now I'm doing them <laughs> over at the mill. Okay. Because we have space at the mill for that now. Right. And we're yes. also partnering up with uh, the people across the street. The King Arthur Flower folks have, a, they're in there and they have a big, beautiful, like, workspace, indoor, outdoor, uh -huh. like, class space. Industrial kitchen kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, but it's this huge thing. So um, we're partnering up with them and doing some retreats with some classes and nice. stuff this summer. Nice. Cool. And so they have lots of big spaces for doing mm -hmm. classes, like an outdoor covered cathedral and indoor, like, huge barn space. And ooh, ooh, ooh. So, okay. yeah. Check that out. So there's going to yeah. be more. There'll be natural dyeing going on. There'll be as the dyes going on. There'll be Good. weaving classes. There'll be spinning classes. Excellent. We'll link all that in the show notes so you can yeah. find out more information about that. Very cool. Because yeah. And in your own time, um, you're still doing Good Vibrations. You're still a part of that. Well, Good Vibrations is of? technically Kristen Husher, but okay. um, we've sort of been partners, and that's kind of the intention of that has always been to make it into some sort of a like a fiber cooperative. Uh huh. But neither of us has either re ever really had the time to, like, really flush that out and make it a real thing. Yep. So it's sort of, like, loosely based. Like, you know, we take, like, my neighbor's fiber and mm -hmm. various people that we know who don't really have a booth or a place or an mm -hmm. outlet or whatever. We just take it and we put it all in our booth and yeah. 
And then I we love, sell it. <laughs> I love going in there because there's a little bit of everything for everybody. There's roving, there's yeah. dad fiber, there's natural, there's all different breeds of sheep. There's finished right. garments. There's, yeah. you know, there's yeah. just all kinds of cool stuff. Right. So it's like a it's little. It's like our little fiber. Yeah. Like, you know, rumble sale or something. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say junk shop, but it's not junk. It's, it's not junk. No, it's beautiful yeah. wool and fiber, but you know, and there is something for everybody. Like we yeah. encourage people to just come in and like feel around and mm-hmm. see what's there. Well, and also we're a group of people, but none of us are raising the same, same kind of animals. So we have, you know, mm-hmm. my Finn and Finn Shetland crosses and mohair and mm-hmm. Kristen has CVM and cashmere goats and mm-hmm. she's got alpacas right and then yep. john has you know dorsets and icelandics and llamas mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we get all the different breeds going and yeah you know we just all different characteristics and, and we try to express stuff. to people yep. like what the differences are between the fibers i mean mm-hmm. a lot of people don't really know that much and so mm-hmm. we've people who are interested will take the time to be like okay well this is what this is like you know this is the fin and feel mm-hmm. how springy and bouncy that is versus this right. llama which is really like straight and flat and versus the mohair right. which is really shiny and curly and beautiful and yeah just to yeah. get people under the idea and you know used to the idea that you know it's more than just the color and just wool or mohair you know right exactly and also <laughs> what it's good for you know this yeah. would this would be hard wearing this right. would be soft next to the skin this exactly. would be you know yeah exactly and we do it's a lot nice. of that at the mill too like getting to right. work at the mill has been like the coolest thing because it's like the only place that my encyclopedic knowledge of various kinds of wool is uh-huh. actually useful yeah <laughs> I feel that way at the tannery too. It's yeah. Like, oh, how's this going to tan out? Okay. What's this wool going to do right. once I get it wet? You know. And you get this like that. level of expertise that is completely yeah. useless for anything else. And like, thank God we can like find little niches to fit that into. Yeah. Exactly. That's where my happy place is. And people who appreciate it and, yeah. and appreciate that knowledge. Yeah. yeah it's really good. Yeah. So um, I always like to ask people, what do you have coming up next? What's your next big exciting project? Um, I just got noticed that I was accepted to the Norwich Farmer's Market for this coming oh, summer. Oh, excellent. So last year I kind of dipped my foot and toes in quietly into a couple of little places here and there. And uh-huh. so I'm looking to ramp up my farmer's markets yeah. and demo opportunities this summer. Excellent. Yeah. That's a great one. Um, lots of repeat customers. I've sold some yeah. in there in the past. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I mean, you make great connections, really you know, like even if that. I don't make a lot of money at the market, mm-hmm. You know, like this winter, I can't tell you how many calls I got from people who were like, oh, you know, I saw you at the Barnard Farmer's Market and we mm-hmm. talked about, you know, wool for my class and I'm ready to do that now. And so, you know, right. people come and yeah. they're buying wool, they're buying some drop spindles mm-hmm. I'm you know, teaching them how to make CD drop spindles and showing them how to nice. do park and draft so they can teach their kids. And yeah, I hope to maybe even go in and do some classes in the, in the schools with the kids mm-hmm. myself. Oh, that would be great. I'm just yeah. looking to like partner up and spread the love. Yeah. Kids love it. We do a lot of demonstrations at the Tunbridge Fair. Yeah. And, uh, and well, you've been there. Yes. <laughs> Duh. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and it's so great. You see, get these kids from, you know, we're in Vermont and you think, oh, it's all rural, but you get kids from Burlington or Montpelier or, or Barrie who have never been on a farm, never yep. seen a farm animal. Yep. Don't know where sweaters come from. Yeah. And you te- teach them the whole, like, in there, they're growing it, and then we card it and spin it and do all this stuff. And, yeah. And they just love it. They're fascinated. Yeah. And especially if you get a spinning wheel out, then you get, like, a little yeah. tribe of them hovering around watching you do yeah, it. Yeah, so, so I always bring a spinning fun. wheel and drop spindles. And if I can't don't have, if I can't sit down because I'm too busy, I try to have a spindle because the kids always, yeah. their glances totally what go, what is that? Doing? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and I always do it with my CD drop spindles, and they recognize the CD. So they're like, oh, what are you doing with that really normal thing? Mm-hmm. Like, That's what, what? Their heads get all. Yeah. And so I always teach them and we always send them home with little bits of yarn that yeah. they've made and stuff. That's great. Yeah. Yep. And those That's kids, they fun. come back too. There was one, mm-hmm. one, I did a few up in Stowe this past summer and there was one kid that I met the first time that I was there and I was playing with a spindle and I came back a few months later mm-hmm. and he came running over and like hugged me. He was like, oh, I have this. And he like made his parents come over and buy him a bag of wool because he's been home like doing finger, finger spindling. I had uh-huh. to give him a CD drop spindle. I couldn't not because... He right. was like so enthusiastic. And he's like, next year you're going to come back and I'm going to come and I'm going to show you what I'm going to make. I'm going to make a scarf for my mom. Uh huh. the cutest thing. They get yeah. so enthusiastic. I love it. I love it. It's it's encouraging too to know the kids aren't just in their, you know, their iPads right. and their video games yeah. all the time. That they really want to yeah. take pride in, and, and make things. Well, I mean, it's just cool. love the whole community aspect. Mm-hmm. It's like I feel like the fiber people mm-hmm. have like a real connection. There's a real community there. Both you like... Do the actual living people that are fellow producers like myself that are local to me, but also like the online communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just feel like there's so much support and, you know, people say, well, you know, you shouldn't be telling people to go to your other so-and-so's farm to buy their wool. And I was like, there's plenty of 
what? Right. Why wouldn't I? Like, why? I don't mm-hmm. feel like I can. I want to hog all the all the sales. Like, there's plenty right. to go around. Well, and you, you want to share the wealth. <laughs> you have a certain breed, and it's you know, yeah. like we said, it's good for certain things. And so, yeah, yeah I, that trade off too. Lots of referrals and yeah. people who have rug yarn, and then they refer thing people to you. You know, oh, or whatever. Just the rug yarn is yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, the mill's really cool. I'm hoping we can do a virtual tour for you guys at some point. Oh, uh, yeah, that soon. would be cool. Would be I'm, sure, I'm sure we yeah. can make that happen. Good, good. I'm sure we can. Cool. I, got it, I got it in. All right. You know somebody <laughs> who works there? Yeah. <laughs> How many degrees of separation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Good. Well, any other uh, upcoming projects or anything you want to share with our audience? Um, Just waiting for lambs right now, really. Oh, yeah, it's exciting. Kristen, yep. just, you just had your first one. I saw Just had my first one. Yeah, and the season. others. Some of them are so big, they've got valleys where their spines should be, and I can't believe they're not spitting them out. Yeah, the lambs are in there going, no, it's cold today, I'll, maybe tomorrow. I know, I'll come. I know. Yeah, all right, well, we'll get you a picture of a baby lamb, too. Yeah. So thanks, everybody, for joining us uh, once again, and don't forget to subscribe to our video series if Dude. you like these interviews with crafters and farmers. Uh, I know I do. Um, and we'll link to all of Kristen's goodness in the show notes, so be sure to check that out. Thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm.